rapid two depth and here's the the diagram basically is how close can the tool rapid to the workpiece well if you did that clearance height at let's say an inch high to wrap it over to drill the next hole it's simply asking how close can I wrap it to the workpiece I'm gonna set that at a, at a tenth of an inch as well the next question is the depth is how deep do you want these center drills we're gonna go ahead and drill down an eighth of an inch for these center drills the question after that is how fast do you want to drill this hole well we're gonna use a conservative seven inches a minute since this is the first time I've machined this part by the way when you're done machining a part you can always go back and tweak these numbers you can speed up and slow down things very easily with intercon the next question is dwell time do we want to wait at the bottom of the hole for any length of time well I don't want to wait I just want it to drill down and wrap it out of there and the next question is how many holes well from the print we have five holes so I'm going to type in five and you can use enter or down arrow a lot of the times when you're filling in this information the next question is the radius of these holes well the radius off the print is 1.125 so an inch and an eighth so I'm gonna go ahead and type that in and the last question is the start angle well, the start angle is always measured from the x-axis counterclockwise so in this case it's 45 degrees from the print that's the start angle to the first hole that's what this is asking you can see it here on the diagram if I would have said 180 degrees it would have machined a hole right here if you say 45 there 90 so you have 90 180 270 360 in that way counterclockwise from the x-axis so I'm going to type in 45 degrees and I'll be sure to get a hole right there and one of the great things about intercon is at any point in time when you're typing this information in you can hit graph and you will actually see a graph of the G code that it just got done generating this is a really nice feature because it's easy to bounce back and forth between entering in the data and seeing the graph of the G code okay I like the way the graph looks so I'm going to hit escape to get back to programming the bolt hole circle for the center drill I like that information there it looks good on the graph so I'm going to hit the F10 accept button Intercon takes that information and stuffs it into line 3 here the bolt hole circle line and inserts a blank line below it and asks us to select the next operation well what do we want to do after we're done center drilling those holes I want to go ahead and drill those holes with the quarter inch diameter drill bit that's tool number two so we need to go grab tool number two to program that next bolt hole circle I'm gonna go ahead and hit the same F4 tool button and except this time we're gonna type in tool two and then press enter and you'll see the description showed up we typed that in in the tool library um, the position in which the tool change takes place is also here we're gonna leave that set to zero zero as well and the height and the diameter offset intercon pulled out of the tool library and there's the diameter and the spindle direction is set to 1200 that again was set in the tool library or you can change that right here if I need to change that RPM I could make that adjustment right here right now I want to make sure the spindle spinning clockwise I'm gonna have the coolant off as well for this first go around and I'm gonna hit F10 except intercon is gonna take that information and stuff in the line number four over here you can see it says the tool change now it's asking us what do you want to do with tool number two select the operation well we want to drill those holes so we're going to do the same thing we're going to hit F5 can cycles F1 drill F2 drill the bolt hole circle and you'll notice that intercon actually remembers all the information that we typed in when we did the center drill so all I have to do is make some small changes to this I don't have to type the number of holes in again I don't have to type the angle in again and remember that there's a big difference though between the type of drilling cycle that I'm going to use between the center drilling and the actual drilling because the drilling is going through an inch thick piece of material so I'm actually going to drill completely through it that's going to be a deep hole cycle that I want to use because I want the tool to back up and clear the chips each time it increments down to drill a little bit so I'm going to use the toggle button to toggle through my choices there's deep hole chip breaking and drilling well that's the deep hole cycle that I want to use so I'm going to leave it set to that and now a few more extra questions show up I'm going to change the depth to a total of 1.2 inches to make up for the drill point so it goes clean through the piece of material the next question after depth this is new now it says increment what increment is is how much do you want intercon to drill down before it backs out of the hole to clear the chips 
I have it set to a tenth of an inch here. That's a nice conservative number. We're going to go ahead and leave it at that. And the next question's new also. It asks for the rapid clearance. Well, when it's done backing out of the hole, Intercom wants to know how close can I wrap it down to where I left off before I continue machining. And that's 50 thousandths or so. Again, that's the default number, and that's probably fine for what I'm doing here today. The rest of the information stays the same, the number of holes, the angle, the diameter, and the plunge rate. That's all looking good. Okay, I can graph this. And sure enough, you see a larger diameter hole around our center drills on all five of the holes. Looks good. Let's talk a little bit about the graph. You'll notice the x-axis and the y-axis are scaled. This is a great feature because when you're looking at the graph, you get an idea how big things are. Um, you also have the capability to look at different views. There's a 2D and 3D view. Um, there's the 3D view right now of our deep hole cycle. You can see the various hash marks. That's it drilling down to the amount in the increment we said and backing completely out of the hole. So it's drilling down a tenth of an inch, backing out, wrapping back down close, continuing on. That's what you're looking at. I'm going to hit the 2D, 3D, F1 button again, back to the top view. Uh, if I hit the view button F2, I get a right hand view looking in from the right hand side and then again looking in from the front hand side. Well, that looks great, so I'm going to go ahead and hit escape to get out of that and get back to programming and then uh, press F10 because this information looked good on the graph. When I hit F10, Intercon takes that information and stuffs it in the line number five here, drilling the bowl hole circle. Okay, we're all done programming our bowl hole circle, so now we want to tackle that circular pocket in the center of our part. We're going to use our 3 8 inch end mill to both machine the inside of this circular pocket and the perimeter. So before I can go program the circular pocket, what I want to do is grab that tool number three, our 3 8 inch end mill, and do a tool change. So to do that, I'm going to press F4 tool and type in tool number three and press enter. And I'm going to change the description because it's wrong in here. It must be an old description from an old tool that we had in here. I'm typing in .375. I'm going to type in EM for end mill. What this description is, is this description will show up on the screen during a tool chain, so it lets the operator know exactly what tool that uh, he should be putting in the spindle. Our position looks good. We're going to continue to do our tool changes at X0, Y0. And the height and diameter offset, it automatically grabbed out of the tool library just like before. Diameter looks good at 0.375. And as I mentioned before, this diameter, this is where cutter comp gets its information. So we will be using cutter comp to machine the perimeter of this particular part. In a can cycle, like a circular pocket or a rectangular pocket, cutter comp is automatic, so there's no need to turn on cutter comp to machine this circular pocket. Um, the spindle RPM is set at 2700 RPM, that's fine. Uh, make sure it sets clockwise, and I'm going to keep the coolant off as well. And that looks good, so I'm going to hit F10 accept, and it takes that information and it stuffs into line number six here, our tool three. And it's asking us, okay, what do you want to do with tool three? We want to machine that circular pocket, so we're going to go ahead and hit F5, can cycle again. Lots of good stuff in here, but this time we're going to choose the F6 circular pocket button. Here's the information it needs to know for the circular pocket. I'm going to hit the F5 help button to turn on the help screen to help me out here.